I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven, your host of Fractionals Unplugged. I'm joined today by Ben Wolf, CEO of Wolf's Edge Integrators. Wolf's Edge Integrators provide fractional integrators to companies looking to create order from chaos. Their fractional chief operating officers or integrators have all owned or run businesses. They focus on helping CEOs of small and mid-sized growing businesses scale and manage their companies. Ben is based in Long Island, New York, or is that Long Island? I'm not sure, Ben, but in any event, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Great to be here. I appreciate you inviting me. Welcome to Fractionals Unplugged, an insider's perspective vodcast and podcast from Maven. You've left the corporate executive world to build your own business to secure your income, savor your independence, and succeed on your terms. But you have to get past the struggles of acquiring clients, building a pipeline, and getting paid what you're worth. In this podcast, Jay Kingley, the CEO of Maven, and his guests share their best practices, tips, and tricks on how you can get out of Struggle City and into Success City and beyond. Enjoy today's episode. Thank you. All right, Ben, let's say I'm running a $50 million manufacturing business that I started 12 years ago. I have the opportunity to double my business over the next three years, but we can't seem to get out of our way operationally. I meet you at a business conference, share my plight, and now you have a maximum of 60 seconds to give me your elevator pitch on what you can do for me. Go! Well, I appreciate it. Nice to meet you. The you know, what, what, what I would share is that if you've never been where you are now before, and so what, what all the people that are at Wolf's Edge Integrators can do is we are you know a group of people who have owned or run businesses before, have already scaled and been where you want to go. And so can help you and your team on how to get there. High level, that's that's what it is. Awesome. Now, let me take it from the other side. Let's say I used to run my own business and implemented and ran on the entrepreneurial operating system or EOS. Now, I've sold my company and now I'd like to become a fractional integrator helping other business owners. What opportunities can Wolf's Edge integrators provide to someone like myself? Well. What the, the people who join Wolf's Edge Integrators are those who want to be part of a team. They, you know, it's not just, it's like John F. Kennedy said, you know, ask not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. People who don't just want to get leads, that's not the kind of people we are looking for. We're looking for people who want to be part of a team, want to give to a group of colleagues and, uh, you know, have what I call the three mores of fractional leadership. That is what we try to have for all the members of our team, which is we will have more fun, more flexibility and more money. So what that means is more, uh, more fun in the sense of doing Work that makes a big difference, changing the lives of the business owners, of the of their teams, of their families, and all the mortgages that get helped being paid, and less stressful lives that get had by doing challenging work. Uh, so that makes it more fun, also more variety because you're working with multiple clients, not just one job, and uh, more flexibility because we're able to make more money than people can typically in a full time COO or integrator job. Uh, with only three days a week, approximately, of client work. Uh, and therefore, what that means is you've got more flexibility, more time for other things and people in your life that you're passionate about, more time to be responsive to client needs when, you know, emergencies come up and not be over, you know, kind of overbooked in terms of your schedule. But, you know, driving the kids to conferences or uh, sports events and, and, and games, uh, taking long weekends, just enjoying that flexibility. And... The last one is more money because, as I said, with that, you know, with uh, with getting paid appropriately as a fractional executive or a fractional CEO with our team, getting paid more than you could when you were full time. Uh, so you get all those three things together. I think that's what it's looking for. But the main thing I would say in one of our core values is team. It's people that want to be part of building something great, not just building their clients' businesses, which you'll eventually leave at the end of the engagement. But building up our firm, building up our that is collectively making a huge difference among many people's companies and having all of us build that together. Well, some people might call what you've described the holy trinity. So I think it's uh, 
a <laughs> compelling trio. Um, I want to explore a little bit with you the difference between a fractional chief operating officer and a fractional integrator. Now, I, in my conversations, and I could be wrong on this, Ben, but I normally hear the term fractional integrator associated with those who support the entrepreneurial operating system or EOS, which is one very well-known approach, dividing process and structure to eliminate operational chaos. But it's far from the only approach. And most of the operational folks who aren't EOS devotees will call themselves a fractional COO as opposed to a fractional integrator. Now, I know that you cover that space. So perhaps you could educate our audience and frankly myself on the difference between a fractional COO, a fractional integrator, and where does EOS, EOS fit and not fit in this world? Well, with the way I use the terms, and I do use them interchangeably, whether it's COO or integrator, I do use them interchangeably uh, because uh, the, even the term fractional integrator or integrator is used by many people in no connection with EOS. So it, it is sometimes used very often not in connection with EOS. It's not an inherently connected term. It's not a trademark term of theirs, which, uh, which they would acknowledge. And uh, so that's a, you know, that's the thing. I use the terms interchangeably. Uh, I use it to refer to the leader of the leadership team, the, 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 you know, the number two of the, of the, of the business under the owner or founder or whatever, whatever he's called or she's called. Uh, and so that integrator is not specific to EOS. Uh, what role does EOS have in this? And well, I would say for us, it is important that any client working with us either is or is willing to, even if they're not already, use a business operating system, whether that's EOS or Pinnacle or Next Level Growth or Catapult.ai is a newer one or any of the others out there uh, that have to be willing to use one because every business needs a business operating system. No business can be healthy and successful if it doesn't identify what its goals are, have me me ways of creating accountability, doesn't have metrics, certain basic things that a business needs, core values. These are things that every business needs and existed, like EOS would tell you, uh, existed for thousands of years before. It's eternal concepts, not specific to them. Uh, and so people need to be willing to have one. If somebody comes to us who doesn't already have a business operating system that they're running on, then we're typically are going to refer them to EOS to an implementer because it's important that that be done right. And I don't want to come into an engagement and none of our team wants to come into an engagement having to reinvent the wheel of and reinventing a new business operating system or a new names for everything in the business operating system. Uh, that is just a waste of time and energy. We'd rather spend our time working on our clients' business, their goals, their problems. Like that's what I'd like to spend our time and energy on, not reinventing the wheel when it comes to an operating system. So we love using an out of the box one. Uh, most familiar with EOS, but you know, definitely open to other ones as well. And I, I, you, you touched on it, I think, in, in the explanation you just gave. But I, I want to put a spotlight on what do you mean when you say business operating system? Define it for us. A business operating system is a management framework for running your business and achieving its goals. That's it. It's just it's a framework. It's a set of tools. Or running your running your business and achieving its goals. That's all it is. The, the operating system, you know, terminology comes from a concept that your computer uses an operating system. If it's Windows, then Windows is running your computer. Now it may have programs, it may have Zoom and Outlook and Word and who knows what else on there. And those are going to be the program. So your business also it needs an operating system. It needs some system to just run the business as a whole. But then there's a marketing function of your business, a sales function of your business, a manufacturing function of your business, a design function of your business, an estimate quoting function of your business, a finance function, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the programs. Those are the Word and the Excel and the Zoom on the operating system of your business. And so that's, that's sort of where that terminology, I believe, comes from. That's a great, concise explanation. Because I think it's one of those terms everyone nods their head because it sounds mm -hmm. like I should know what it means. But when you probe, sometimes people are like, I don't really know. 
now they do. Let me flip over and talk about uh, revenue. You know, one of the big benefits you said about being part of your company is the income part. So I, I'm, I have no doubt that when one of your integrators goes out and gets their own client, you're like, yay, go team. But if they're not doing that, what are you doing to find clients to keep your fractional integrators busy? How are we getting clients? All right. So, uh, a lot of different ways. And we have our CRO, we have our chief revenue officer of our own firm, you know, for Wolf's Edge within itself, that is responsible for both marketing and sales and making sure that the two work together. Uh, so we do marketing activities, whether that's obviously like LinkedIn, our uh, blog, our my podcast, which Jay, you've been on, which I appreciate the teaching and, and mm -hmm. uh, information that you shared with us. And uh, so let me see. Uh, with a podcast. And then a, a lot of it is uh, relationship nurturing. I, uh, I have this time of year, uh, after annual planning season, and I'm on maybe six, eight calls a week with different EOS implementers and other trusted advisors. And uh, just getting getting referrals by email, like very often just getting lots of referrals by email. That's how a lot of them come in. Uh, get people booking through the website who discover us through the web or SEO or articles uh, or the podcast or any of our lead magnets, et cetera. So we have a good website, we highlight our team through those, through those things last week or one or two weeks ago, we did a big, a big campaign, like highlighting the experience of all of our team members, right? talking about how the, you know, oh, you know, how one ran a 68 location franchise and another one, you know, took took a business that was having 10% of their quarterly rocks or goals being fulfilled and then took them within one quarter to over 90% of their goals being fulfilled every quarter. Uh, and actually not even having to lose one member of the leadership team, having to elevate all of them to be able to be successful. And so we're highlighting the members of our team and then what they've accomplished. That's a, that's a lot of it. Um, and then that's like on the marketing side. And then once leads come in, it's on the sales side. So we have a very robust sales process discovery process. Uh, we have decks and proposals and, and, and things like we've, we've got all that worked out. So when you're starting off a practice on your own, you've got to reinvent all those wheels on your own or retain Jay and Taz at their, at their firm to teach you exactly how to develop the business yourself. Recommend that you do reach out to them if you, if you, are, uh, if you are starting off as a solo so that you don't have to, again, reinvent the wheel. You have to uh, Learn what works, adapt it to you, and start doing it, and not have to reinvent the wheel. When you're joining a firm, you have a similar benefit. You have business development, marketing, sales. It's all already been figured out. So I mean, it's always been evolving. It's not like static, but it's 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 been worked out. We're doing it. We're continually iterating it. So I would say that's what we're, that's what we're doing for our team members in terms of business development. Thanks for not putting us out of business. Ben. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. We're just Nerd. one, we're just one little team out there. Every <laughs> solo in the world needs you. And there's thousands and thousands of them. Uh, I get it. Look, there are, there are a number of companies that provide fractional integrators and, you know, new ones pop up every day. What makes Wolf's Edge integrators different from the others that are? Well, I can't speak. There's, uh, there's definitely others that have some of the similar qualities. Uh, this is not to the exclusion of any others. Um, but what I would say what really sets us apart is that, our team are all people that have owned and run businesses before of a good size, decades of experience. So when a business owner is looking for somebody that's done this before, that's not just a meeting facilitator, not just somebody to run their meetings uh, or understand their operating system tools, but somebody that's actually achieved and built what they're looking to build before. I'm going to show you how to go where I've already been and lead your team towards a place that is at least analogous to the places where I've already been, things that I've already accomplished. That's the, that's the, that's the main thing as taking people to uh, where our team members have already been. So uh, when we're looking at, uh, when we're looking at uh, having people join the team, first of all, people can learn more about that. Wolf said integrators.com. There's a page under the about section called join the team. You can learn all about that and you know how that works. But um, we are, uh, you know, we're looking for people that have owned or run businesses before, have have many years of experience, uh, because that's sort of the unique thing that we're bringing to our clients. I want you to take a step back, if you will, from Wolf's Edge Integrators and position yourself as the industry sage. So, what are you, what's your perspective 
on the biggest challenges that face fractional integrators today? Fractional integrators specifically, it's interesting. It's it's hard to know where to where to start. I believe that the need is great. There are four and a half million businesses, according to the Department of Labor, that have between 10 and 250 people in them in the United States alone. And, you know, 10 to 250 people, right? So there's people that are big enough to start needing a leadership team and like four and a half million businesses and tens of millions of employees' lives are dependent on those businesses. And 90% of business owners are not serial entrepreneurs. They're not people who have built businesses before. Most of the people who are building small and mid-sized businesses are those who have not done this before. They've never been as big as they are now in a business that they ran, maybe an employee, but not as a business that they ran. And so it's so the challenge is not whether there's enough clients. The challenge is not whether there's not enough people who need the experience that you have running businesses that you've done before. The challenge uh, the challenge is I guess awareness of that. The challenge is having enough people out there who know who you are, who are trusted advisors and will refer you to the people that they know uh, and the people who have a need. Uh, that's going to be the challenge. Uh, one time, the challenge is that you're going to, because of financial need, uh, you know, act in ways that are desperate uh, before you have a chance to become known among the right people who are your actual target market clients and make a difference for them. You know, so that business development side is the is is the most challenging. So business development, uh, you know, it's 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 a shame. Most people who are integrators, their number one skill is not business development. It's managing people, building systems, building teams. These are your skill sets, and yet you will fail. At least, as especially as a solo practitioner, you will fail if you don't become good at business development. Um, and so that's, you know, that, that's, that's maybe the biggest challenge and to develop that skill well enough while you're, while you're building up to, uh, you know, to, to, to get a full enough plate that you, you know, that you can like get going and then start running the business development flywheel. Um, and then you just have to ask yourself whether you like that part of your job description enough to continue doing it for the rest of your life. If you do then great. You could be, you know, continually successful. You continually be building your pipeline. Uh, but if you realize that you hate that part of your job, but hopefully recognize that it always must be part of your job, then you just have a decision to make, <laughs> like join a firm maybe where you don't have to do as much business development or go back and get a job again, or you know, maybe join Jay's group. But, but it's, a, it's a challenge. So maybe I'm actually thinking out loud. So maybe the biggest challenge to go back to your question <laughs> was is, is is the fact that the skills that make you a great integrator are not the same skills that will make you successful in having a solo practitionership as an as a fractional integrator uh, that's the biggest challenge and there's a lot of different ways to solve that Ben I think that's an incredibly astute observation i I would even take it a half step further to say the better you are as an integrator the worst you're going to be in business development because, you know, you pick a lane, you have a strength and people who are successful play to strengths, not to weaknesses. So if when someone says to me, if they were an integrator and they were talking to me and they said, well, the one thing I've nailed is business development, I would say, well, it's a shame you haven't nailed the integrator part then because you're picking a lane. And what lane do you want to pick? And if you're going out as a fractional integrator, you better be damn good at that. So I do think you are right. You know, the way you deal with a weakness is you have a team and, and your team covers the weakness where you focus on the strength. And there are different solutions out there. I think you are an amazing solution for an integrator that wants to be part of a team that has the qualifications that you are looking for. You know, we provide that team equivalent um, for soul, for people that want to be solo, don't want to be part of a team. And there's different strokes for different flow mm -hmm. folks. But I think to say, I'm going to be the world's greatest integrator and I'm going to be the world's greatest business development person is delusional. That's a little <laughs> bit direct, but at the end of the day, <laughs> you've got to solve that problem.
So let's go back to you and, and how you solve that problem for folks. So if I'm an integrator, I meet the qualifications of what you're looking for. I really want to be part of the Wolf's Edge integrator team. Tell me how the economics would work. Economics is, well, it's, you're actually catching us at an interesting time as we record this because we're, we're currently, like many other teams, in an independent contractor model. And we have a split. There's a, uh, there, there's a split of revenue, whatever we collect from our clients. If the integrator that's working on that client is taking a percentage of that, and uh, all of that information is on our, our website again, wolfsedgeintegrators.com, and uh, click on the About Us, join the team page. Uh, you can get all the information there, including the numbers. And I'll just say the numbers are 60 40. That's the numbers in terms of that split. Um, but it's an interesting place now because one of the things that we feel is important, team element is very, very important to me. And, you know, we're not looking to be just a referral source for people. If somebody's primarily looking for that, Again, we're not the right place where you want to go. And so one of the things that's very important to me is that all of our members of our team feel a feeling of ownership in what we're building together and in what we're doing together. And so that's why we're in the process now over the next few months, we're talking to lawyers and accountants already, is we're converting to a partnership, right? We want all of the members of our team to feel and have skin in the game. And like be building their own firms just as much as they're building Ben Wolf's firm. And to have, they're building all of our firms together. Uh, so that's very, very important to me. Um, that's the kind of that's, that's the kind of people we're looking for. It's the kind of commitment we're looking for. So uh, that is the, you know, that, that, is, that is what we're looking for. We're looking at partners, you know, but, uh, but for the actual client work, there's a, uh, there's a split. Well, I think that's certainly going to take you to even the next level and really solidify that concept and value of being part of a team. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to learn a bit about Ben. You've spent the last 25 or more years working your way up the corporate ladder, achieving success and reward along the way. Whether corporate kicked you to the curb or you walked out the door of your own volition, there is no going back. You're nowhere close to retiring, so you're moving on to your second act as a fractional executive. You're feeling the thrill of freedom mixed with the dread of the unknown. You're not alone. Maven works with the elite 20%, turning the top fractional executives' aspirations into reality easily and quickly. Imagine the right clients needing your genius, chasing you to get it, and happy to pay you for the impact you make. Maven helps you build all aspects of your business to fund your lifestyle without having to work corporate hours. With Maven, market yourself easily select your clients with purpose, and build a business that leverages your genius on your terms, not on someone else's. Reach out to Jay at j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com. Transform your expertise into a prosperous business where you'll make the impact you want with all the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned. Welcome back. We're talking to Ben Wolf, the CEO of Wolf's Edge Integrators, who provide fractional integrators to companies looking to create operational sanity out of chaos. Ben, let's find out a bit more about you. Let's start with what's your biggest professional accomplishment? Professional accomplishment, I would say, is the first company I grew up in entrepreneurially and did not have the experience at the time. That's where I gained the experience of building a business where I came from being a corporate bankruptcy attorney at a big firm in New York City, no entrepreneurial background at all, ended up through a very interesting series of events at a healthcare startup and uh, grew there, it was zero revenue when I started and had the opportunity, again, through a strange series of events to build most of the operations of this business and uh, grow the business from that point of being the first full-time employee. Uh, together with uh, joining with the founder and ultimately growing to over 130 people and over 100 million gross revenue by the time I left. And just the accomplishment of just, I mean, all different areas of the business and just all figuring it out. I mean, all just figuring it out what works. Hadn't done it before, but, but it, just a th it was a stressful and thrilling experience to, to build that business. I would say initially, at least, that yeah, that's the biggest professional accomplishment 
Uh, that was a lot of fun. Well, I don't want anyone to acclu- accuse me of not being fair and balanced. So I must ask you, what is your biggest professional failure? But what, what I think we're most interested is, what did you learn from it? And how did that shape what you do today? It's interesting. I would say the hardest period was right before I joined that company that I just mentioned. Right before I joined that, I was coming from that law firm and I, uh, I was laid off from the law firm and I was unemployed for five months before that opportunity came about. And it was very scary, very stressful and trying to put on a brave face, very confident in, in my affect. But my wife was very supportive. Was, I was looking at law firm jobs, bankruptcy firm, uh, bankruptcy department jobs. I, I did a Clifton Strengths Finder with a friend of mine who was a co- official, you know, certified person in that, and try to look at so what are my other strengths? What are some other areas you know, where I could look at, as you said earlier, focusing on strengths rather than weaknesses, and where I could do something that I could make a good living but, and still make a big difference in a way that I couldn't before. And so that was a whole exploration, all different kinds of jobs that I was looking at there before I guess like interesting place came about. And I guess I mean, what do we learn from that experience is wh- why, why was I the law firm to begin with, right? I didn't love it. I was looking for a couple of years, even before that for another job <laughs> that I had a skill set in certain areas of it, but looking for where the paycheck was and what, like, what I could do and, and just make the money and to support my family. When I think about applying that lesson, to or that problem, I should say more than a lesson, to the fractional executives that I talk to is, and people ask, what sort of product should I do? I could, I've been a CTO, I've been a COO, and people say I've done all these different things, I've accomplished all these different things, people have decades of career. What should I do? Like, how do I narrow it? What, what should I sell myself as? Don't sell yourself as all those things that you could do because people will just think, oh, he's just desperate for work and he'll just say anything. Um, and so I, I ask them to look at, I don't know what advice I'm sure you give people advice. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's the same. I tell people to look at the Venn diagram of three factors of what's something that you love doing that there's a market that people will pay for and, uh, something that you're really good at and you could make a real, make a real impact in. You know, whatever you're going to specialize in, or whatever product as you're going to productize your services, uh, whatever your product's going to be or your service is going to be, it's going to fulfill those three requirements. It's going to be the Venn diagram with very few things that fulfill all three of those requirements. So there is a market for that people pay good money for. You love doing it and you could do it really well and make a big difference doing it. Uh, you know, when you figure that out, okay, that's your product. Or maybe you have a couple of things and you have to choose one, but like that's your product. Or products, you know, so I would say that and hopefully you won't be sitting like I was in a law firm, just like kind of dreading every day going to work. The requirement. Life is too short to do something that you don't have passion for. And uh, so I'm, I'm huge on that. The other thing I like to, to say to people is the more talented you are, the more things you could do. But that doesn't mean that what you should do is anywhere close. So what you should do is a small subset of all the things that you could do. And that focus is important. And I think your Venn diagram, exactly the way you think about it. Now, you talked about moving from a contractor model to a partnership model to solidify team. But what else do you foresee for you and Wolf's Edge integrators over the next 12 months? Maybe it's more than 12 months, but we just had our annual last week. So I'm very much thinking about our, we'll call it our three-year picture, where we want to get to 50 team members, 140 clients. Now, with our average client size, uh, we feel like when we can get to that point, then that's going to be, among those 140 companies, that's going to be about 5,600 team members whose lives are being impacted by our work. That's 1,500 employees, 1,500 mortgages, 1,500, you know, carpools and sets of, you know, sets of school. Uh, w- when people are able to support themselves, people are able to not be stressed out by having toxic people at work because, again, maybe they, they just, they don't know how to get out of that situation. If somebody that's really effective at work or at your business 
You don't know how to get rid of them because they're so they're so competent. Hey, we we want to get in there as a COO, get the right people in the right seats, doing the right things, executing on the stuff that they've been stuck on, making their lives less stressful, pleasure pleasurable, you know, le, you know, more satisfying. Help people meet those mortgages. I don't know. Make fifty six hundred people's lives better and those business owners' lives better, and have them start fulfilling their dreams and working on the next big opportunity that they want to work on. That, that that's our that's our pleasure. Like that's that's what these that's what these fifty team members are going to be are going to be doing with these hundred forty companies. So that's what we're excited. Ben, what's the best way for our audience, be it a prospective client who needs what you do? or a fractional integrator that wants to be part of the team that you've talked about, what's the best way for them to contact you? Wolfsedgeintegrators.com. That's the place to go. I mean, the main page is designed for the business owners. Look, start looking straight there. If you're a business owner, if you're a potential fractional integrator, or you are a fractional integrator, or maybe you're a full-time COO or integrator somewhere looking to potentially go into fractional, I don't go to the same place on the About Us page. One of the menu items is join the team. We've got a ton of detail and information there. Please look through everything, watch all the videos, read all the FAQs. If you feel like we're a good fit for each other, put in an application and when the right time comes, then we'll, we'll be in touch. We will put that contact information in the show notes for both the podcast and the video. Ben, I want to thank you for being a guest on our Fractionals Unplugged show. Be sure to subscribe to both our podcast on all the major platforms and our YouTube channel for our videos. Until next time, make an impact on your clients and family on your terms, securing your independence with the freedom, flexibility, and control that you've earned.